on the road today and I love a good road trip. I love traveling in general, but I especially love a road trip. And it's a beautiful sunny day. It's a great day to go for a drive. Uh, I'm thankful because I've had lots of opportunity in my life to travel. I was counting it up today and uh, I, it, it doesn't seem like I've been to this many places, but somehow in my life I've managed to visit 14 countries on five different continents. And I have traveled by car, by van, by bus, by RV, by semi-truck. I've been on uh, float planes and propeller planes and jets and jumbo jets and like all kinds of transportation. I've been on ferries and like massive cruise ships and canoes. I've even, I've even traveled on trains. Like, I'm not sure there's much of a form of transportation I haven't taken. And as a result, I've been able to visit some really incredible places. I mean, the world is huge and it's such an amazing place. And there's so many wonderful people and cultures and, you know, and every time I travel, I think I learn something new and, and in some way I'm changed and better for having done it. Now, a lot of my trips have been just for that whole joy of experience and learning and, and visiting someplace new. Sometimes when I travel, it's for the purpose of uh, telling people about Jesus. And I'll have the opportunity to meet with other Christians and, and get to know them and build friendships. But then also talk to people about, well, a, a word we learned last week, right? The word gospel, the good news about Jesus. And we'll go and we'll travel and we'll, we'll tell people in these other places about that. And I've managed to go, boy, a few different places doing that. I've been to Argentina and Romania and... Um, Mexico and Northern Ireland. I even once got to go to Toronto to tell people about Jesus. And let me tell you, there's a lot of people there that need Jesus. And whenever I go there and do those sorts of things, certainly I, I know I've done something good and I've done something God wanted me to, but probably I get more out of it. It almost feels like I get more out of it than anyone else. And uh, there's actually a long history of people traveling and telling others about Jesus. In fact, it goes all the way back to Jesus himself. In one of his last um, moments on earth, right, as he was wrapping up his mission, he told his first disciples to go everywhere and tell everyone about himself. He said, wherever you go, go there and tell people about me. And then go to places where they don't know about me. Basically, he said, go everywhere and tell everyone about me. And in fact, if we, we know from church history that um, Thomas, one of the disciples that we sometimes call Doubting Thomas, he went all the way to India and started telling people there about Jesus. Last week we talked about how Peter went from Jerusalem to Joppa and then Cornelius' house and told people there about Jesus. Um, Paul, we know from history that he, uh, he went, well, all over and kind of, we want to look at one of his missionary journeys a little bit more in our Bible story this week. story this morning comes to us from the book of Acts chapters 13 and 14. And Paul, who used to be called Saul, right? We've already heard about him a couple weeks ago. He was living in a city called Antioch. And in the in the church there was another friend he met he knew called Barnabas. Barnabas he met back in Jerusalem when uh, right after Paul first became a Christian. Barnabas was the one that helped Paul learn about Jesus more 
and helped him get to know some of the other uh, apostles and other disciples, people who knew Jesus. And so Paul and Barnabas were in church and their whole church was praying about how to share the gospel and who they should share it with. And after a season of praying, they came to the understanding that Paul and Barnabas should go on a missions trip. And so they left from church after the whole church had prepared them, prayed for them a blessing, and sent them on their way. They begin traveling around. And they went to the cities or in the islands around their area. They went to Cyprus and Perga and another Antioch and Iconium and Lystra and Derby. And then they did the whole thing in reverse to eventually get back home. It was quite a long trip. And in fact, really most of the places they went are part of what would now we would call the countries of Syria and Turkey and Greece. And so as they traveled around, they were telling people the good news of Jesus, the gospel. And often what they did is when they arrived in a city, they would look for a synagogue. And a synagogue is a place of worship for the Jewish people where they could pray and worship God and study the Torah. Um, and it was also a place where they could continue on much of their Jewish culture. Um, basically, it's like a mini temple, but outside of Jerusalem. Wherever the Jewish people had gone uh, and spread throughout the Roman world. And so Paul would start there. He was himself a Jew. He would first go to the Jewish people. But sometimes they were unwelcome. Or sometimes there wasn't even a synagogue that they could go to. And in those times, they would find a, a different group of people. People known as Gentiles. Gentiles are basically anyone who is not Jewish. Right? So me, for example, and probably maybe even you. In, in fact, it's most of the world. Right? For the Jewish people, you're either a Jew or you're a Gentile. And so that's who Paul and Barnabas began sharing the good news of Jesus with. Now, for the Jewish people, when they would share the good news, for them, the good news looked a little bit like, well, they were waiting for a Messiah. And so what Paul and Barnabas would do is help them understand how the Messiah they were waiting for was Jesus and how Jesus fulfilled everything. Because for them, the Messiah was someone who was going to come and save them as a people and help restore them to the place where they used to be, help them have a relationship with God. And so, uh, yes, Jesus absolutely is the Messiah. And Paul and Barnabas were just helping people understand that. But for the Gentiles, they weren't waiting around for a Messiah. They didn't They didn't know and even that there was one or should be one. And, and for them, good news was a lot like about how Jesus um, helps them have a relationship with God or, or helps them so that they don't have to be judged by God or condemned by God. In fact, what Je and both sides are true, but what Jesus, a relationship for the Gentiles with Jesus looks a lot like, um, well, Jesus fulfills that longingness that's kind of in everyone. That, that ache that we might feel when the world just isn't right, Jesus helps us make sense of it. Because there's something inside of us that's never fully whole until we've got a relationship with God through Jesus. And so Paul and Barnabas were helping people understand that too. That everyone, you, me, everyone on this planet was created for a relationship with God through Jesus Christ. And they needed to know that. They needed to know that truth. And so they traveled around telling people about it. And then they went back home after a long time and shared with their church, the church that sent them out. They would then share back and report back how in each town, not only did people come to know Jesus, but then they would form a church. They would form a new place where um, people could gather, Jewish people and Gentile people together could gather to learn to worship God, to pray, to listen to teaching, to understand more about what a life with God looks like. Because if you remember last week, we talked about how there was a set of rules that Jesus came and kind of did away with, replaced. And in those rules, one of those rules was that Jews and Gentiles couldn't be together, at least from the Jewish perspective, right? But 
So Gentiles couldn't go to the synagogue to pray. They couldn't go to the synagogue to worship. They didn't really have a place to go. And so these new churches became, became places where Jew and Gentile would come together to worship God. And so in each place that Paul and Barnabas had visited, there was this new place where Jews and Gentiles together could begin worshiping God. And so when they got home, they were telling other believers about that. How the difference in the changes that had happened in people's lives and how the gospel message had spread. And that's what they really felt was their mission was to spread the gospel. In fact, that's the mission that you and I still carry. Until Jesus comes back, every one of his followers is supposed to be sharing the good news of the gospel, is to be sharing uh, all about what Jesus did and said and the difference that that makes, right? We're to tell everyone everywhere the good news of Jesus. Again, as Jesus was wrapping up his mission on earth, he told his disciples to go everywhere and tell everyone about him. Mark, um, in Mark's gospel, we've got a new verse that's uh, our theme verse for this week. And in Mark 16, 15, we read this, that we are to, what Jesus said, go into all the world and preach the gospel to all creation. That's still... That mission is still in place. Nothing has changed that. Nothing has ended that. And until Jesus comes back, that's still the mission of every one of his followers. I think a lot of people look at Jesus and they don't realize that life with him is any better than life without. They think Jesus just brings rules. They don't see the grace. They think Jesus is fake. They, they really don't believe he's true. They think Jesus doesn't care. They don't see the compassion. They think Jesus doesn't let you have any fun. They haven't seen true joy. They think Jesus doesn't listen. They, they, they've never felt heard. See, these are just some of the reasons where I've heard people express why they don't follow Jesus or they don't go to church or they even care if God's real or not. Now, there's a response to each one of these that you and I can be a part of. You, well, me, you, we, we can show grace because we've received grace. We can remind others of truth because we believe it. We can offer compassion because God has given us a spirit of compassion, his spirit in us. Joy is infectious. Ask anyone who's Irish, right? You can't, you can share, you can share the joy that you have in Jesus. And you can listen, I can listen, we all can listen to others and we can help others see that God is listening too. Now, sometimes we think that sharing the gospel is preaching a sermon. And sometimes that's true, but most of the time, most of the time, it's sharing the gospel is just a lot of little things uh, all come together to point to Jesus. Consider this lake, right? This big lake behind me. You know, yeah, it, the gospel is just like this body of water in some ways. It's huge. It's awe-inspiring. It's beautiful. It's full of life, and it gives life. But... What is a lake but a collection of millions of drops of water? Now, on their own, they're, a drop of water is really insignificant, right? Like, you would never say you went swimming if you just spilled a drop of water on yourself. And little, but all together, it, all together, the drops of water make something big and grand and significant. Little acts of grace, compassion, kindness, gentleness, faithfulness, truth, and all of that done in Jesus' name, well, when together they come together and they form this beautiful gospel of Jesus, you listening, you showing compassion, you doing all these little things together help live 
and show the gospel. The gospel is good news about Jesus, absolutely. And it's not just a Bible verse we tell people once and then walk away from. It's something we live out. The difference, it's the difference Jesus makes in your life. And that is what we are able to share with everyone, everywhere we go.